Welcome. Today I'm at Nova Southeastern with the designer group that created ProTaper Next. It's been the collaboration of a big effort by many people over several years. I'm pretty excited to work with you today and show you a little bit about what I've learned. And guess what? I got the short straw, so I have to do the demo on the S block. You can see we already have straight line access. There's a nice well. There's a straightaway portion of the canal. You can see a little bit deeper, the canal has its first curve. And if I hold the Explorer to the first curve relative to the straightaway portion, you can judge that angle to be about 40, 45 degrees. Then the canal makes a second curve. And if we put the Explorer tangential to the apical third relative to the first curve, you can see that's probably about 30 degrees. The canal ends right inside this little well, and that would be the terminus. So some decisions need to be made. When you open up a tooth clinically, you would always start off by irrigating, and you'd always want to have a reagent in. Today I'm just using alcohol, but clinically you'd want to use ProLube or a viscous chelator, like ProLube, and that would be always what we would do. But in this case, if I use ProLube, you would see nothing. Notice if I take a tin file, the tin file demonstrates that when I come in here, the handle's standing up straight and tall. In other words, we not only have coronal access, but I'm emphasizing we have radicular access. If we didn't have radicular access, as an example, if the handle was off axis, which is normal in forcated teeth, then we would probably use something like the SX because it's a great instrument to rapidly pre-flare the orifice. It can remove triangles of dentin, and also it can relocate the coronal aspect of canals away from external root concavities. The SX has the biggest taper in the business, it's 19%, and right in the middle of this instrument is a GG1234. So we can use this in a brushing motion, really want to emphasize brushing so that it doesn't grab. If your SX is grabbing, you're pecking and you're not brushing. So we have a 10 file at the diagnostic length, and what I'm going to do is, you can use a variety of different ways to pre-curve your instruments, but I'm going to put a little curve on the file. I'm going to exaggerate the curve. I don't know exactly what the curve is, because clinically you wouldn't be able to see. So we'll just put a little curve on the file, and we'll be using a little watch winding motion to thread the pre-curve file down through the body of the canal. If the file at any time meets resistance, pull. Feed it in a little bit deeper, and pull, and we're starting to get a slide path going. In glide path management, you need to have a mechanical method that you're thinking about. You could stop and use the eight if necessary, but as long as the instrument can progress, just take little short strokes, feed it in pull, we can take a little bit more work, and now the stop's approaching the reference point. So pretty much you can see I'm moving the whole block, which means the file's pretty snug at length. So we have the canal catheterized. Let's expand this working with. We can do that with a mechanical file, and I like to use path file because path file is a very rapid way, efficient, to expand the working with to get to our first ProTaper next rotary file. So we can come in with the instrument spinning, and just a little brushing helps. But essentially, the instrument will just float right down when it achieves length. You can come right out, and between rotary instruments, we should always do the big three. And what we should do is we should irrigate, because a little bit of debris has been accumulating, and by irrigating, we keep that debris loose and in suspension, and now we can recapitulate with a tin file, and the tin file just assures that we still have our glide path. With a known glide path, we can come right back in with path file number two. This is a 1602, and we can spin, and it'll feed right in and follow the glide path perfectly to length. Once we've achieved length, we can come out. Now, remember, every time we remove a mechanical file, we really want to make sure that we irrigate and flush the canal out. We want to recapitulate with a small-sized hand file. In this case, it's a 10 hand file. And make sure the canal's patent. No debris should be accumulating towards the terminus, and then re-irrigate to liberate any residual debris that is inside the canal. Now, I have the first ProTaper Nix file. If I just turn it on, you can appreciate its movement. 
we'll see it even more exaggerate as we move through the series. As a co-developer of ProTaper, the original version, we always learn the importance of blushing. And brushing creates lateral space and allows your instrument to feed in progressively deeper. So let's fire this up and move right in. And before resistance, let's begin to paint and brush on the outstroke. Since this is a simulated single canal, we can brush in all directions, east, west, north, and south. And once we've brushed, watch the instrument float in, not grabbing, just floating in very, very easily and notice all the debris we're making. A lot of times in a longer canal that's smaller in diameter and more curved, you might want to stop along the journey and irrigate, recapitulate and re-irrigate just to make sure you get that debris out. You can see we're at length, no grabbing, complete control, and the instrument is used primarily in a brushing motion. So what did we talk about? We talked about all that debris. So after every single mechanical file, whether you think you need to or not, never miss the step of irrigating. Always keep your hand in motion when you irrigate so you never lock up the cannula and make the canal an extension of the canal. That's how you get a sodium hypochlorite accident. I can vacuum a little bit and irrigate and vacuum and irrigate, but notice all that debris? Still see debris on those lateral walls, so let's just recapitulate with the tin file. The tin file can break up debris. It can move that debris into solution, and now it's loose, and now we can re-irrigate, and we can kick out that debris. We've taken our X1 file to length. We're ready to go to the X2. The X2 file is a 2506. Remember, it's progressive tapered. I like to put the file in and kind of judge how much work I have to do. If you want to know how much work you have to do, you only have to look at the distance between the bottom of the stop and your reference point to know there's just a little job of about two stops. It's always an even progression from instrument to instrument. So, importantly, before resistance, before resistance, begin to paint. And as you brush, again, you're making lateral space. And as you make lateral space, that will allow the instrument to float in passively a little bit deeper. You'll not notice any grabbing in this technique because the lateral space deactivates the instrument and minimizes its contact. Once we've brushed and made lateral space, we can float in just a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper, and there we are at length. So what you notice is an enormous amount of debris on the instrument. Clinically, you never see this, and you're always about a file away from victory or a file away from defeat. So never skip the step irrigate, keep the cannula moving, always keep the cannula loose in the canal, and then let's recapitulate. And by clearing the canal with a tin file, we can take that debris and we can move it back into solution so that it's loose debris. And you don't even have to see this, but this is what's going on clinically. And now when we re-irrigate, we can liberate that debris. So irrigate, Vacuum, irrigate, vacuum, irrigate, vacuum. And we can just pull all this debris right out so you have pretty much a clean canal as you go. So at this, at this point, we could ask ourselves if we're done. And what we might want to do is use a gauging file. But a lot of us just look at the terminal part of our file. And if our file is loaded with debris, you can be very confident that that instrument just cut its shape in the apical one-third. So that means the 2506 came out loaded. We could probably fit a cone at this point. We'll do it just for fun. So here we would be using a matching Pro Taper Nix Gutta Percha point. We would always fit a cone in a wet canal of our Pro Taper Nix X2, and we can slide it right to the foramen. And there it is. And let's move on to our X3, Pro Taper Next X3. Watch this instrument, and it's kind of exciting how it randomly hits the walls. So let's go in. This would be a 30 tip, as you would expect from the rubber stop, which is blue, and this has a taper of 07. We can come in, we can start to brush. I always want to emphasize brushing. That was one of the big secrets of the original Pro Taper success. And 
the success was brushing to limit the contact of the instrument between itself and, in this case, plastic. And also, by brushing, we can better address the internal anatomy, because many canals have external concavities and eccentricities off their rounder portions. Once that instrument's achieved length, we need to remember all the debris that was on the instrument, but look at the residual debris that's still inside the block. And then we need to always consider the importance of recapitulating. Remember, this is stirring the soup. The tin file is like stirring the debris, moving it back into solution, so that when you re-irrigate, you can liberate that debris. And I like to just kind of move the instrument gently but loosely at length. Now that I have loose debris, I can come back in with my irrigating syringe and I can liberate this debris. So now you have a fully shaped canal. This would be pretty much appropriate for the vast majority of the canals in multi-rooted teeth in the posterior region. Again, you could size a carrier if your choice was carrier-based obturation or gutta core. Or in the instance of warm gutta percha, you could use the matching Pro Taper Nix cone that's identified with a blue head. And you could just fit that in a wet canal and slide that to length. And there it is. Now the tenets of good shaping that Herb Schilder gave us years ago is that we have a continuous tapering preparation. We've maintained the original anatomy, we've maintained the position of the foramen, and we've kept the foramen as small as practical. You'll have a lot of fun with the Pro Taper Next series.